I had heard a lot about the lore regarding The Big Lebowski, but I finally got to watch it, and I gotta say, it did not disappoint. Besides the script, the actors, and the set design, the costumes were such an integral part of the story of conveying who these characters were, and as a bonus, they created these iconic outfits that are recognizable to this day. But are they stylish? That's what I kind of want to answer. The Big Lebowski was released on March 6, 1998, and was directed by the Coen brothers, with the costume design done by Mary Zofries, who's worked with the brothers on films such as No Country for Old Men, Burn After Reading, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, and that is just to name a few. Obviously, I have to start with the dude who is played by the one and only Jeff Bridges. My first impression of the dude was that he had a relaxed, carefree, kind of stoner vibe, which allowed him to wear whatever felt right for him. I noticed that he was all about comfort, i.e. the robe, his sweatshirts, elasticated pants, and then a lot of his stoner vibe really came out with those PVC clear jelly shoes and these colorful weightlifting pants. While I was researching, I read that Mary said that the dude was terminally relaxed, which kind of checks out with what I was thinking and saying. I think it's fair to say that it's pretty obvious uh, by looking at him. I mean, not many people would go to Ralph's in a bathrobe. Because of his terminal chillness, she made sure to go with more comfortable clothes for him. Lots of elasticated waistbands, comfy sweatshirts, sweaters, nothing that's going to restrict him much. Now, the film was set in the LA in the early 90s, which is why Mary stuck to going to thrift stores around the Venice area because that's where the dude was hanging around and that's where he would be going to shop. In those thrift stores is where she found the iconic taupe robe, which is in what I believe to be a soft terry cotton. Under the robe is a disheveled white v-neck and a pair of 60s plaid shorts in a green and navy. I love the robe, and I know everybody's gonna disagree with me when I say this, but with the way that it lays on him, I feel like there's an argument to be made that this could be a good outerwear piece. If you get rid of the tie and the side loops, it's basically a kimono style jacket, and I for one love it. The way that the shoulders are dropped and how the collar lays on him, it looks fantastic. And also you don't just have to take my word for it, here you can see James Harris from the Menswear Podcast throwing fits in a coat that looks eerily similar to the robe that the dude wears. It even has the side loops and the tie. Okay, I'm done now. So the shorts were actually from the 60s because Mary had the idea that the dude would have kept some of his clothes for decades, no matter what the trends have been. Expanding on the shorts, he's often seen wearing different plaid shorts, as well as these tired looking v-necks, and this is where I depart from liking his outfits. I have to admit, I can't stand plaid shorts or v-necks. The shorts make me feel like I'm in middle school again, shopping at American Eagle, and the v-necks... I mean, I don't even know what to say about them other than, it ain't for me, dog. Another example of an outfit that unfortunately has these articles of clothing in it is this one where he's wearing this faded green zip-up hoodie over his disheveled v-neck. The hoodie is a nice shape and fit with it being drop-shouldered but not oversized, it's very faded, and actually on a side note, a lot of his clothes, including his sweatshirts, are super faded and worn in, which, I mean, always makes everything look better. Like this mustard thermal and this oversized gray crew neck. With this outfit, he's wearing either his PVC jelly shoes or these Automix branded martial arts shoes in this white and black colorway. It's random pieces like this that add to the uniqueness of his style. But other than the sweatshirt and the shoes, this outfit is pretty mid for me. And I, I, I know I'm shitting on the dude's style, but what I will say is that it's genuine to him. He's dressing for no one other than himself. And I will say that the sleeves on his v-necks, they're okay. They're pretty good. You know, they're nice short sleeves that are slim but not tight on him. Now to go back to giving the dude compliments, he has great pieces in his wardrobe like this three-quarter sleeve raglan baseball shirt of a Japanese baseball star, K. Rubetto, which actually belonged to Jeff Bridges and has been seen on a couple other films that Jeff has been in. A little bit of a backstory behind the piece. Before their first fitting, Mary went to Jeff's house and he offered her to go through his closet to see if there was anything she liked that she wanted to take for the movie. Besides the baseball tee, she also took the PVC jelly sandals that he wears in multiple scenes. Yes, those are Jeff Bridges. Honestly, it kind of checks out when you look at the guy. Another cool piece that I really gravitated towards was this extremely oversized faded out hoodie that had this like six inch cut going down the center front. The cuffs and the bottom ribbing were really short, the shoulders dropped, and the color was awesome, super faded. The only criticism I had for it was that the length was way too long, it should have been a lot more cropped, and then it would have been a perfect piece for me, but this is for the dude. 
Another piece that really caught my eye and made me feel like the dude had a unique sense of style, like I hadn't been thinking that already, was this amazing pale yellow and brown bowling shirt. I mean, such an unbelievable color combo and such a stark difference from what we had seen the dude wearing. I really liked how they switched up his style with this one, and this is basically his like formal wear, in a sense. Lastly, obviously, I have to talk about the cardigan. The iconic cardigan was a Pendleton shawl collar zip up with a Cowichan print, which originates from the First Nation tribe of British Columbia. This is one of the most, if not the most notable pieces from the movie. It's in a light beige colorway with a light brown and black pattern. The cardigan looks effortlessly good on him, both because of the garment's relaxed shape as well as it perfectly matching the attitude of the dude. Personally, my favorite outfit with this cardigan was with the pale green pants and his white v-neck. If you wish to get your hands on this cardigan, you're in luck because Pendleton is now selling it again on their website and even reference the dude in the description for it. Depending on your budget though, it might be a bit steep at $250, or you can try to find the original one that Pendleton made. So the one accessory that the dude wears throughout the film are these Varnett model VL 1307 sunglasses, which are in a matte tortoise frame and brown lenses, according to Nick from Banff Style. So this is probably the only item that the dude has that is over $50. These guys come in at a whopping $260. Hard to see the dude pulling the trigger on a, on a, a John this expensive, but who knows? Maybe it was a gift. So Walter, played by John Goodman, is in what I would call PTSD core or war crime chic. Since it was pretty obvious that the guy was stuck in the Vietnam War, both mentally and the way he dressed, every top he wore, whether it was a long sleeve button up, short sleeve button up, a polo, or even a t-shirt, he wore this fisherman's vest with it. In one outfit, we see him wearing an M65 field jacket with these dark green oversized army fatigue pants. The pants look like something you could see some kid wear in Bushwick nowadays. And then on feet, he's got a pair of Converse. I love the tonal colors with this one and kind of like the shape of everything I thought was very awesome. We also see him wearing Vietnam era jungle boots with cargo shorts. I don't know how, but it works so well on him. It almost makes me want to wear shorts and I like refuse to do so normally. For the top portion of this outfit, he had a black polo with, you guessed it, his fisherman vest. This outfit was a home run for me personally. The high boots and shorts look is kind of in right now in Brooklyn and uh, it looks so natural on him. I love like this mixture of military wear with like middle-aged man core. So just like the dude, one thing that stays pretty consistent are these yellow tinted aviators that he has on. These were also most likely coming from his days in the war. They looked so badass and fit his vibe like perfectly. Honestly, I probably like them so much because my first memorable encounter with these types of sunglasses was with Hunter S. Thompson in them and Boy, was that guy an interesting character. One day, I will break down his style. Spoiler, I loved it. Anyway, back to Walter. I loved his military outfits, and that's most likely due to my love for military clothing. I love seeing people have their influences shown on their sleeves, and quite literally in this case. Oh, Donnie. Good old Donnie. Love that guy. When I first looked at Donnie, played by Steve Buscemi, I immediately clocked in that this guy must have had like a, a retro 50s type of influence with his bowling shirts and straight leg pants. Donnie had such an amazing array of bowling shirts with some revered collars, others with regular shirt collars, and they were all in different colors and had nice chain stitching details on them. And I thought he had some of the coolest shirts in the film. One of my favorite outfits of his was this gray convertible collar bowling shirt that had these red accents at the collar, the stitching, and the back gussets, and that was paired with some green twill slacks. Now, both the pants and shirt are relaxed on him, making him swim in them, and I think they did that deliberately. I don't really think it was supposed to fit perfectly on him, because he gets pushed around by Walter, and his clothes are, like, engulfing him and making him look smaller, emphasizing his meekness. But even with all that said, he still looks so good. And other than the shirts, the only other piece we see him in is this blue fold-over collar zip-up jacket that hits right below his hips and is very slouchy on him, just like the rest of his tops. It's no doubt that Donnie is the king when it comes to bowling shirts. I don't think anybody can dispute that. Now, these three weren't the only guys who had some great and iconic outfits in the film. I want to go through some of the minor characters that need a light shined on them. There was Jesus with his 70s inspired jumpsuits. This purple one with a red slash maroon side stripe on it is insane. 
If you remove the character from the outfit, it makes it even better. The matching crop jacket with the maroon stripe on the shoulder and sleeve was such a nice touch. I loved the jacket and how it matched. It looked great. I also love how the pants flared out a little bit at the bottom. Other than his purple jumpsuit, he also had this sea foam like deep blue jumpsuit with a light blue stripe on the side. And this one is nice, but I still think that purple one just pops way better. There's also Maud with her velvet green floor length shawl collar coat that engulfs her, but in the best way. Zofri said that the coat was based off a leopard shawl collar robe, but they didn't think it was regal enough, so they used this vintage green velvet fabric to make their version. Awesome to know that's a custom piece because it's so gorgeous. And then there's her father, Mr. Lebowski, not to get confused with the dude. For the most part, I really don't care about his wardrobe, except in this one scene where he's wearing an extremely oversized oatmeal shawl collar cardigan with these exaggerated drop shoulders and a deep plunging shawl collar. I actually like how the plaid blanket kind of matched nicely with the cardigan, it was a great combo. I think that they made this change with Mr. Lebowski to kind of like foreshadow that he and the dude are a lot similar than Mr. Lebowski likes to lead on. He's not some millionaire. He doesn't even have money because he's so poor at business, according to his daughter. I thought doing that was actually a really nice touch. I also love the Nihilists with their skin tight pants and monochromatic black outfits. Their last scene with them all decked out in leather, whether it was their skinny jeans or leather jackets, it all looked so good. It screamed like German rave mixed with biker culture to me, and I thought it was awesome. And then there was obviously the stranger with his Western attire. I can't get enough of the Western style button up. Plus that leather shawl vest they gave him was phenomenal. And then of course you have to give him some classic American blue jeans and a Western cowboy hat. I can't say it enough, but I always get inspired whenever I see some Western outfits. Now, the main question I wanted to answer, are these guys stylish? Well, for the dude, much like Tyler Durden from Fight Club, the dude definitely has confidence in himself, in what he wears, and on top of that, he's comfortable in what he wears because it fits him and fits his needs perfectly. So, in a way, he's stylish, but if we looked at his outfits objectively, they're all pretty embarrassing. I mean, come on, those middle school shorts? Not great. But when you add in the hair, the beard, the personality, the man pulls it off with ease, so I gotta give it to him. And I think this kind of goes for Walter as well, where his clothes fit him the way he likes and it suits his needs. The middle-aged man core with the military look is both great and makes no sense at the same time. For Donnie, I think the clothes and outfit themselves are amazing, but his swagger or lack thereof makes his outfits not as good as they could be. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Let me know who is your favorite style-wise and whether you thought these guys were stylish. Please subscribe, like the video, comment down below, share it with a friend, that would be awesome. Follow me on my socials. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. It's all linked down below. That's gonna do it for me. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.